This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Last week, OpenAI released the GPT store. And in this video, I'm going to show you what are the best GPTs for programmers. So let's get started. OK, I'm going to leave the link of all the GPTs that I'm going to mention in this video in the description below. And you can also search it here on the search bar in the GPT store. And now let's start with the first GPT in this list. And the first GPT is Designer GPT. And as you can see with this, you can create and host beautiful websites. It's plain and simple what this GPT does. And as an example, I'm going to create a simple website and this is going to generate the website in just some seconds. For example, if I want to create a pizzeria website, I just have to type this, press enter and in some seconds, Designer GPT is going to build this website and it's going to give us a link to go to this new website. All right, so you can see we have to first to allow sites that we trust. So we click on confirm. And after this, it's going to create that website that we asked for. And here's the website that it created. We only have to click on this link and we're going to see the website. So it's the website. We see delicious pizzeria. We see this food and then we see some basic sections and then a final section where we can leave our name and our email. And that's the basic website that it created. So I go back to ChatGPT, and here we can see that if we want to add some sections or change the website that it generated, we can continue this conversation and edit or change the website that we got. And something cool that I found that we can do with this, um, this GPT, and it doesn't say anything here, is that we can ask for the code behind this website. We can ask for the HTML code. So what I'm going to type here is, can I get the code for this website? And then we're going to get the HTML code that was used to generate this simple website. Great, now we have the code behind our website. If you copy this and paste it into your code editor, you want to see that you're going to get the same website. All right, now let's go to the next GPT in this list. And this GPT is called Screenshot to Code GPT. And this GPT is going to also help us create websites. But unlike the previous GPT where we created a website from an idea we have in our mind, in this case, we're going to create a website from a screenshot that we provide. So as you can see here, we have to upload a screenshot of a website and it's going to convert this screenshot to clean HTML, Tailwind or GS code. So here, as an example, I'm going to take a screenshot of my own website here, as you can see. It's on the right. So this is the website. I'm going to take a screenshot and then I'm going to provide this to this GPT. So here I upload it and you don't have to type any prompt. You only have to to give that a screenshot. So here I'm press enter. And as you can see, this website has uh, different sections. First, a main section with the last the latest article. Then we have most popular articles here. We have three in a row. And then we have a sidebar. And uh, on the left, we have another section with that with the new articles that I published. So there are different sections. And let's see how this GPT is going to manage to, to copy this website. All right, this GPT finished the code cool generation, but it didn't do it in one shot. Actually, uh, uh, it is stopped in the first in the first attempt. So I have to type continue. So it continue generating. And after that, I noticed that it only generated the code for the first half of the website. So only the first, these two first sections. So I told this GPT that it only generated the code for the first half. And I asked also the second half and it generated the code for the second half. And then I asked to put all the code together. So here's all the code that was generated. So what I'm going to do here is copy this code and then paste it on my code editor. So here is my code editor. I'm going to minimize this on the on the left. So here I have the code editor. Then I'm going to save this as my website that HTML and it's here my website that HTML. And as you can see now, I have this website. It's not the same website as the one I provided here on the screenshot, but at least I have the structure. Uh, as you can see, if I move some sections, I can give form to the to the structure of this website and then I can continue developing this website. So it looks exactly as the one you see on the screenshot. All right, now let's see the next GPT in this list. And the next GPT is called CodeTutor. And I like GPT-4 and other GPTs that are meant to help you learn to code. 
this one has a different approach. This doesn't give you the answers to your coding questions right away, but it helps you to think to get the answers. You're going to get the same answers to your coding questions, but this GPT is going to help you think and find the answer with some guide. For example, let's say that I don't know the difference between tuples, lists, and dictionaries. So here I'm going to type this question. How are tuples different from lists and dictionaries? And then I'm going to press enter. And as you can see, instead of giving me the answer right away, it's asking me about one key difference between a tuple and a list. So here I'm going to type that I think there's a difference in mutability. I think one is mutable and the other is unmutable, but I'm going to type that I don't clearly understand the concept of mutable and unmutable objects. Then I press enter. And as you can see, it gives me the definition of mutable and immutable objects. And now it asks me another question. Can you guess which one between a tuple and a list is mutable and which one is immutable? And why do you think this distinction is important? And well, if it's telling me that mutable objects can be changed, then I think lists are mutable. So here I'm going to type lists are mutable. So I'm going to get the answer and it's going to keep the conversation going. And in the end, I'm going to get the answer for my first and main question, the difference between tuples and lists and dictionaries. And if you compare this with GPT-4 or with another GPT, you're going to see that it's very different. For example, here, I'm going to paste the same question. And as you might know, other GPTs and also GPT-4 gives you the answer right away. It's going to list all the, the qualities of this concepts and that's it. It's not going to help you think. And on my experience, when you don't get the answer right away, but when you're thinking and reasoning to get the solutions of your problems, you learn more. And this is important when you're learning to code. And speaking of effective ways to learning how to code, I want to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is the best way to learn computer science interactively. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational and advanced math to AI, data science, and more. I love the computer science course because you learn coding concepts with interactive exercises. For example, let's see this exercise on how the while loop works. Instead of just memorizing concepts, we have the chance to see how the while loop works in action. In the example, the block will advance as long as the condition from is clear is true. When the condition is false, it turns right. And that's how it goes through the four corners of this square. Just like this, you can learn how other coding concepts work by using our reasoning and developing our analytical thinking. And as we see in this video, this is the best way to learn how to code. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash the coach. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. All right, now let's go back to the video. All right, now let's see the next GPT. And this one is called Scrape GPT. And this one extract data from websites. You only need to provide a PDF from the website that you want to extract data from. And then you have to upload this PDF to ChatGPT and then specify what data you want to extract. And it's going to extract all the information that you specify. For example, here I search web scraping courses on Udemy.com and I have the results. And now I have to save this as PDF. So here I go to files, then print, and then I'm going to put in the layout instead of portrait, I'm going to put it, I'm going to set it as landscape. And now I have the website in landscape and this is how it looks in the website right now. And now I'm going to click on save. And now I'm going to save this as you can see here. And once it's saved, I'm going to provide the data that I want to extract. And as a sample, I'm going to use the data from the first item in this list. The data that I want to extract is the name of the course, name of the structure, ratings, number of ratings, and the hours of the course. So here I type it and then I up upload the PDF that I saved it before. So here's the PDF. And with this, I only have to press enter. And this GPT is going to extract the same data, but for the rest of the items listed in the website. And here I have a preview of the first rows in the CSV file that it generated. So here I have also the link of the CSV file. And if I click here, I download the CSV file with all the data that was on the website. So here, as you can see, I'm on Excel. And here's all the data that I wanted to extract the title, instructor, ratings, number of ratings, and the hours of the courses. All right, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comment section if you have one GPT that you use a lot for programming or for data analysis and that wasn't included in this list. 